Hey, what's up? I'm Will Button from DevOps for Developers. And today we're going to talk about network routing. So for most of us in the DevOps field, a lot of the network routing gets abstracted away from us and we don't have to deal with it a whole lot. But I still think this is a critical skill to have to be successful as a developer or as a DevOps engineer, because sooner or later you're going to have networking issues and just having a basic understanding of how networking works is going to make troubleshooting that process a lot simpler. So let's just jump right into it. So we're going to start with my super high fidelity rendition of my laptop here. And it's got an IP address of 192.168.5.220 with a slash 24 or a class C network. So that subnet is gonna be really important in understanding how traffic goes from my laptop to my example here where we're gonna to go to Google. All right, if you don't understand subnets, go ahead and check out the other video I have that explains subnets and that will make this video make a lot more sense. So for me, Google, the IP address that google.com resolves to is 172.217.3.110. And I say resolves for me because Google employs something called GeoDNS, meaning whenever I do a lookup on google.com, it uses my IP address to give me the IP address of a Google host that's closest to me for better performance. So from my computer here, I go to, I type in google.com and that resolves to this IP address up here. We look at my subnet and clearly we know that that IP address is not on my subnet. So my computer is gonna go to my default gateway, which is my router. And it has an IP address of 192.168.5.1, right? So that's gonna receive my request. And so my router here has the connection to my network, but it also has the connection to my ISP. And so the ISP's address that, or the address assigned to my router from my ISP is 68.24.19.4. And that also is a slash 24 or a class C network. So when my request gets to here, it looks at this IP address and it looks at this subnet mask and says, well, that's not Google either. So then it goes to the default gateway provided on my ISP's network. And it's gonna follow that same process. You know, it's gonna look at its IP address, it's gonna look at the subnet mask and then either route to that thing or in our example here, keep routing through the gateways until it gets over to Google's network, all right? So let's say we finally end up over here and we end up in this router that has an IP address of 172.0.0.1 and it is a class A subnet, also known as a slash eight subnet, meaning that all of these IP addresses are within that network. So now we know we're getting close, right? So we're like, hey dude, we're trying to get to this specific IP address, can you help us out? And this is gonna have multiple connections on it, okay? Just for the sake of our conversation here. So let's say that this one has 172, this network interface has 172.1.1.1, and it's a class B, so it'll be a slash 16. This one we'll say is 172.2.1.1, and it's also a class, uh, class B. And then just to give me a little more room to draw over here, let's say we go out to this one, and this one is 172.217.0.1, class B subnet. So now we're getting close. So this tells us that we're working with these two digits. So we go into this router, or we continue along this route here. We're gonna find another interface that has 172.217.3.1. Dot three dot one and it's finally going to be our class C so now we're just working on this digit and somewhere inside of here we're gonna find a network switch with a server connected to it and that server is going to have the IP address assigned to it a 172.217.3.110 which is the server that we're looking for right so now we finally made it to Google it's going to take a look at our request, um, do whatever it has to do with it, 
and then return that all the way back through this path until it gets back to my laptop. And so that's kind of how it works, right? You just continue along this path of going to the next router, finding out what the network for that router is. If that's the network that you're looking for, you look for that specific resource. If not, you find the gateway for that network and continue on. And, and this can actually take quite a few hops. Uh, if I run a traceroute command from my laptop, you can actually see that it took 18 hops to get over to Google. So now the exact 18 hops that it took to get over there isn't really important, but the process of understanding what causes a network packet to hop from one location to the next is, because sooner or later you're going to be finding yourself in a scenario where you've got in your AWS VPC, you know, you may have a subnet for dev, a subnet for staging, and a subnet for prod, and you want to route between those and understanding how to build those route tables and what causes a device to either look within its own network or look to an external network is going to make that process go a lot smoother for you and make it more secure as a result. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click the like button down below and go ahead and click the subscribe button for me as well so that you see the new videos I'm releasing on DevOps for Developers each week and uh, I'll see you next time. See ya.